Hi everyone, this is Dr. Sarala. Welcome to Millet Magic. We make some dishes for breakfast, some for lunch and some for dinner. But what we are going to make today can be eaten any time of the day for any meal. Stuffed with a soft and tasty filling, aloo paratha is a regular in a Punjabi thali and equally enjoyed by one and all. Today we'll be making this all-time favorite using millets. You will require 2 cups of brown top millet flour. I have found that parathas are best made with brown top millet flour. You will also require half a cup of urudal flour. Note the ratio 4 times millet flour is to 1 time urudal flour. Add some salt to taste. And now, using warm water, moisten the entire flour with the help of your hands. You can add ajwain seeds into the dough as well, but I prefer to add it into this stuffing. Allow the moistened flour to rest for 15 minutes. After 15 minutes, adding a little more water if required, mix it all into a smooth dough. Knead well for 5 minutes. At the end, your dough should neither be too soft nor too hard. Smear a little oil on the surface of the dough. And cover it with a wet cloth. This ensures that the moisture does not evaporate and the dough does not become too dry. Allow the dough to rest for 6 to 8 hours. When we do this, the dough becomes smooth and easy to handle. And now for the stuffing. You will require around 8 potatoes which are cooked, peeled and then mashed. Also, half a teaspoon of turmeric, 1 teaspoon of ajwain, 1 cup of fresh coriander finely chopped, around 6 to 8 green chilies finely cut, 1 teaspoon of red chilli powder, the paste of 1 inch of ginger and cooking oil. Once you have mashed the potatoes and ensured that there are no huge lumps, add in the turmeric. The ajwain seeds which you need to gently crush before putting them in. The finely chopped fresh coriander, the more the better. A teaspoon of red chilli powder and the finely chopped green chilies. You can skip the green chilies if you want it to be less spicy. Add salt to taste and then the ginger paste. Mix well using your hands so that all the ingredients combine thoroughly together. I like to keep the stuffing simple. You can also add garlic paste, garam masala powder, armchur powder or even chopped onions if you like. Make sure that you taste the stuffing at this stage. It needs to be slightly high on salt and spice so that it has enough taste to impart even after being combined with the dough. Divide the dough and the stuffing into small balls. This is the proportion of dough as to filling you will require. Note that the amount of stuffing needs to be 25-30% to 30 more than the dough. Now knead the ball of dough in your hand once again. And with the help of your thumb, gently put pressure to make a cup shape. Do not make the base of the cup too thin. Now place the stuffing inside the cup and while pressing the stuffing with one hand, 
gently pull the edges of the dough to surround the stuffing with the other. Then bring the edges of the cup of dough together until they combine. Pinch them together to seal it off and remove excess if any. Now place your stuffed dough in dry atta and press it in the center. Now turn it over and press from the edges. This helps the stuffing to get distributed evenly. Transfer it onto your working surface and press from all the sides. Now with the help of a rolling pin, roll it out. The trick is to be as gentle as possible. Also, do not roll the paratha from the center outwards. This will push all the stuffing to the edges and then the edges start cracking. Instead, roll from the top to the bottom on the left side and from the bottom to the top on the right side. Then slightly rotate the paratha and repeat. By doing this, the stuffing gets evenly distributed inside and there are no breaks. Using this technique, you can roll out the parathas as thin as you like. Heat an iron tawa. A thick gauge one would be better. On a low to medium flame, cook the paratha from both the sides. After cooking it dry for a few seconds on each side, apply some oil, ghee or butter. We don't want to flash cook the paratha. Cooking it slowly ensures that the outside is crispy and the inside remains soft. Serve the paratha hot with a little bit of butter and pickle or with pudina chutney and curd. And though it's really tempting and difficult to wait, be careful not to burn your tongue. Do try it out. There is no doubt you're surely going to love it. We'll be back next week with yet another amazing recipe, Rava Idli. Until then, happy cooking!